We're building in wild weather conditions. We're gonna have to do some really sketchy stuff. But Trent has confidence in our plan. I think we're gonna put the ladder in the skid steer bucket and lift it up. The day started off completely unexpected. She's still part of our family and I just want her to be okay. And we're taking it minute by minute. It's like all that's going through my head is like, oh no, is my dog gonna die from this? Needless to say, things have been a little chaotic. Today has just been one giant disaster. But when it gets tough, the tough get going. It's not, it's la 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 la. Even though this morning, we thought we lost her for good. The thought of like losing Lika is horrific. a soup bowl. <laughs> well, yeah, but they kind of look like that sometimes. Allie is trying to make a lemon blueberry hoofanani. Is that what they're called? A uh, Dutch baby. <laughs> Dutch baby. I think they're also called hootenannies. No one calls them that. I'm counting on it tasting better than it looks. That's for sure. Go. Yummy. Confirm that it is yummy. Put it back in his mouth. <laughs> is that good? Do you want more? More? Okay. Oh, you're just going for it. What would you like me to do? Just the whole half a pan. <laughs> no, I want you to eat it. It's good. Uh, a quarter. I hope you like it. It's like uh, it's a little dense and compressed in the middle, but that's because while it's cooking, this is like a souffle. It like puffs up and like fully cooks, and then when you take it out of the oven, it deflates and falls down. And uh, while it was cooking, Leo turned off the oven three different times. <laughs> so that could contribute to it. Also, it could be the elevation, but either way, it tastes great. I called Jose, he's actually gonna send some guys out here in like two or three days to start drilling holes into the foundation and tying rebar so that we can order some concrete and get these slabs poured. As soon as we get these two slabs poured, we can start building our walls for the bathroom in the man cave and then do drywall in there and just start making more progress. So I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, using our transit laser so that I can get some lines marked on the outside of the foundation so that we can snap a chalk line so that when those guys show up, they'll know exactly where they can drill holes for the rebar so they can tie the slab into the existing wall. Well, that actually went a little bit quicker than I was anticipating. Uh, the skid steer can move a lot of gravel and dirt and rocks and whatever you can get at it, but my issue when running the skid steer is that like, I'm, I'm digging and I'm pushing and I'm trying to remove material and I don't like actually know how deep I'm going or how much material I'm moving until after I've removed it. And then sometimes instead of doing like a nice little skim and removing some, I like have removed a big belly and then I haven't removed anything at the back. So it's a little bit 
of a learning curve. It's gonna take me a little while before I actually like operate it like with great finesse. But I got a lot of the material removed out of there. Now I think with uh, a rake and some shovels, maybe we can kind of move the gravel around to where we get at least the ends to the proper height. And then we can do a nice gradual slope. But before we can do that, I kind of need to remove a lot of gravel from the edge of the concrete so that we can snap a chalk line of exactly where our top of our concrete is gonna go. Ugh. So sick of mud. There might be some high spots, there might be some low spots, but honestly, I couldn't tell you. I'm not exactly sure. The main thing is that I really want some slope that goes from the back of the garage to the front of the garage to drain water, but if that's, you know, not exactly perfect it won't be the end of the world it'll just be kind of annoying we actually had all of our ice and water shield delivered so we could start doing ice and water shield on the two additions but i think we are going to go and get some two by tens because we need two by tens in order to frame out our eave on the back of the house and before we can put up our ice and water shield we have to get that done so i guess we're going to home depot We just need to go get 10 12 foot 2 by 10s. 10 12 foot 2 by 10s. I wish we could have filmed that, but uh, Allie's not here, and Brandon and I both had to do some. Pretty creative stuff. We loaded all the wood into the bed and then we realized that we needed to lift the wood up to close the tailgate. So we basically had to do like a freaking clean and press and like hold it with one arm while we close the tailgate. I'm sweating just from that escapade. But we got all 10 of our two by tens. We got our two bats, our two bales of bats of insulation and uh, everything's tied down and loaded into the truck. We're heading back to the house. We're gonna have to do some really sketchy stuff. This is gonna be a total like, don't try this at home type of uh, maneuver. I think we're gonna put the ladder in the skid steer bucket and lift it up and I'm gonna be on the roof and hopefully we can get it done. But uh, let's get uh, some things rearranged before we give it a go. I gotta go get the harness and the rope and stuff from downstairs. Oh my gosh. It's kind of cool and gray. It's probably gonna rain because that's just our life and it's been raining every day. But for right now it's not raining and these guys have been trying for a week or two or three to figure out how to do this on the back of the, the garage. I don't know how it's gonna go, honestly. without saying that this is a little bit high consequence. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. And we're taking it nice and slow. We have a whole procedure of exactly what needs to happen every step of the way. But we're being very, very careful.
Good job, guys. Yeah, baby. How was that? I mean, it's cool to have it done, but it's not fun. Yeah. We're gonna get this next piece of fascia nailed in from above, and that will be the end of the hard part. All right, this is the last big piece. Luckily, because now it's thundering, of course, we're gonna beat the rain. We're gonna nail this last big piece in seamlessly, slowly, smoothly, and then we can all breathe again. Hawk almost got you. Yeah, it did. That's cool. There it goes. Woo. Wow. That's pretty. But I'm trying not to show. He wants to eat you. Keeps coming back. They said it would be easy. Still, I'm giving all I got. I just want to tell you something. It must have been something I forgot. All this time, it was never. What happened to your boots? <laughs> I wanted to go swimming. <laughs> I got sucked in. This part should be easier. Less eventful. Going where you go. If you let me, I'll promise you better days. Only better days. Whoa, we're like three quarters short. It was Lika. I don't know about that angle. Angle? Doesn't look good to me. Looks pretty, steep, Looks huh? pretty sharp. <laughs> That's how we roll. Third time's a charm. Here we go. Oh, look at that. It's perfect. Good job. All this time. Oh my god. 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 Only better days. Did that feel tight to you? Yeah, I drove it over there. You were literally within half an inch of that truck. I was screaming. <laughs> you need to spend more time looking at a tape. <laughs> You're right, a quarter of an inch. Way more than a half inch. <laughs> you did very good. That was intense. Thank you. You're a little sweaty. Wow. Very sweaty. <laughs> but you did good. I'm, uh, I'm glad that we got the fascia boards up there. They're nailed on. They're not blocked, but uh, we can do the blocking from below. Looks like it's about to rain and it's like, you know, well into the afternoon, so we're probably gonna call it a day, get everything cleaned up, and uh, we'll continue roofing. Yeah, tomorrow we're gonna finish the blocking and hopefully get our ice and wire shield on. What's up guys and good morning. We had a long night last night, but I am up and at them. I am ready to get to work today, but before I get to work, I always have my AG1, and today's video is sponsored by AG1. This drink has absolutely changed my life. When we first started drinking AG1, the differences that I noticed immediately, and the differences that I notice when I don't drink it, are extremely apparent. This is foundational nutrition. It gives you like all of these nutrients and vitamins and minerals that you could probably get if you ate some crazy diet that was super diverse, but honestly, who has time for that? It's really easy to just get a scoop of AG1, throw it into this canister every morning, shake it up, and then you've got this nice baseline. And not to mention, AG1 has improved my gut health tenfold. I used to have all these stomach problems, and now when I drink AG1, 
they're gone. AG1 is not just a product that I believe in, but it's something that I recommend to absolutely everyone. Anybody that I see that has like, you know, they're groggy or they're tired or they don't feel healthy, I'm like, dude, you should really try some AG1. AG1 has changed my focus, my energy, my gut health. Honestly, there's an entire checklist of things that this little drink has done for me. And right now, if you guys check them out, you'll actually get five free travel packs and a one year supply of vitamin D free with your first purchase. So if you guys want to check them out, you can click the link in our description, or you can go to drinkag1.com slash Trent and Allie to take advantage of their deal. I wanted to say thanks again to AG1 for changing my life and sponsoring this video. Now we are going to go outside and get to work. A little scare, a little rush of adrenaline, but everything is okay. I wanna preface that ahead of time. Everything is okay. Lika went outside to the bathroom this morning and there was another dog in our front yard. And she ran to go greet that other dog and in doing so, she ran across a wood pile and I, I, I didn't see it happen. Trent was outside, but something happened in that wood pile as she was trying to go greet the other dog. She like tripped or her foot got stuck in a hole or she misstepped and she just completely lost it and started screaming like I've never heard a dog scream before. It's like not something you ever want to hear and she's okay but for that second it really really freaked us out and Trent actually got to her first he ran he was already outside so he ran over to her and picked her up and we just started trying to figure out what the heck had just happened it doesn't like she's not cut she doesn't have any like exterior injury she won't use her right leg and then above her right shoulder there's like a big bulb like a big mass of what feels like blood so I assume it's a big hematoma and I'm thinking that when she was running she either slipped or misstepped or something and ran her shoulder into like a stump or a log or a piece of wood or something that caused that you know subfascia separation which has caused like some internal bleeding into this hematoma I don't know this is just a, a, a guess but we're taking her to the vet right now. Uh, they're probably gonna do some x-rays and do some analysis and kind of see what's going on and hopefully hopefully she's fine. She doesn't really want to use that leg, but she's stopped yelping and crying, which was a little scarring at first, but I think she's gonna be all right. We're just taking her to the vet uh, for good measure. about is that she's not whining at all her tail is wagging she's alert so even if there is a little bit of like bruising or hematoma or something I don't think anything is broken you're a good girl and uh, it's you know I'm glad we're at the vet and taking it seriously but I think she's gonna be okay it just really scared us above everything else but the tech just came in and did a baseline assessment. Lika's heart rate looks good, um, her breathing looks good. They were a little worried about like if blood had been 
in her lungs or gotten into her lungs or if some type of blunt force trauma had affected her heart rate. That all looks good. Her temperature is not above what they would consider scary or like she doesn't have a fever. It's a pretty large hematoma and it's continuing to grow. So they're going to probably want to sedate her and take some x-rays and figure out where it's coming from. Um, I am really glad that we brought her in um, just because you just don't really know with the dog. They can't tell you exactly what's going on. She's not crying or whimpering anymore, but she's definitely not using that leg. So I know she's in pain. Um, and obviously like when we saw what happened, like it was obvious that something traumatic had just happened to her. But for now she's stable and everything is fine. So we're just spending a little bit of unexpected time getting cozy at our vet's office and feeling once again, very thankful that we have a relationship with a great vet we're only like 20 or 30 minutes away from a vet. We got here. We got her here immediately, um, and you know it could have always been worse. Yeah, it's just like a little shocking. I'm just like I, I know people who have had dogs uh, running through like the forest or the desert that misstepped and a branch has like penetrated into their chest and they die. Oh, I think wow. that's what happens is they die because usually a chest penetration like that is lung or heart or both. And like, it's just really scary. So when she was running through the, the pile and she started screaming the way that she was screaming, that's like all that's going through my head is like, oh no, is my dog gonna die from this? And like, it was very scary, but I think, I think she's gonna be okay. All right, we got a route. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so I'm gonna take her to room three and then straight back, okay? okay. She's okay. She's fine. <sighs> I always, I always joke that Lika is my wild child and that she requires a lot of attention. She's very needy. She just like, she needs a lot from us, but she's still like part of our family and um, I just want her to be okay. So, <sighs> um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> They took her back um, and they're gonna do some x-rays, but in order to get her into the position that they really need, they're gonna sedate her so that they can like really move her arm and shoulder around and make sure um, there isn't some like small hidden fracture that they weren't able to feel initially um, and f try to figure out where this hematoma is coming from um, and make sure that there isn't any other like leaks or blood seeping into any other parts of her body. She's in good hands, I like these vets. The vet industry has had a really tough time over the past couple years with COVID and being understaffed and inundated with patients. And so I always feel for them. And I, especially during an emergency, like your first response is to say like, give me the best attention and give it to me right away. And uh, vets bear the brunt of that so much. And they are dealing with patients like that all day, every single day. So I always try to be super considerate and, and just like express my gratitude with them. Um, and <laughs> I did not expect to be emotional um, because it's okay. Everything is fine. I'm going to take a few deep breaths. <laughs> and um, of course, while we're in the middle of this, Trent got a phone call that the concrete guys had just shown up at our house and they were ready to start like laying rebar and getting um, concrete ready to be poured in the additions on both sides of the garage. So Brandon actually swung by and picked him up. Him and Trent raced back off to the house to go help um, oversee all of that. I actually have a couple errands to run so I'm gonna get those done and just wait to get a call from the vet hopefully in just an hour or two saying that everything is fine. <laughs> All right, well, I had to leave Allie and Lika at the vet. It's a little bit nerve-wracking, but 
I think it's gonna be all right. The uh, concrete guys have actually just shown up. They're gonna hammer drill into the foundation on the man cave side and start tying rebar in there. While they're doing that, Brandon and I are gonna start to get to work on the back of the house. We are gonna try and get all this blocking completely blocked out and nailed in and everything ready to go so that we can start doing the ice and water shield. We're gonna start busting it out right now. I'm gonna go see if I can find my sun hat and we're gonna start doing some blocking. Close your eyes Get some rest I'm by your side Lay your head on my chest We got all of the blocking done that goes underneath the eave on this back side of the house. So now we are ready to start doing our ice and water shield and what do you know, looks like it's gonna rain. Got some threatening gray clouds on the horizon, so I think we're gonna start throwing up the ice and water shield, throwing it on the roof, cutting it to size and getting it stuck down. We'll try and get as much as we can done before it starts raining. I know it hurts, it wasn't fair. Thank you so much, George. Have a good day. Thank you. So don't despair. Good girl. We're just getting home. Lika is resting comfortably with Trent and Brandon, having a little snuggle sesh. Good girl. I mean, it's really good news. Nothing is broken, nothing is fractured. Um, the tendons don't look torn, they all look intact, but they're all obviously very inflamed. So it's muscular or like, you know, it's not structural, it's not skeletal. Um, however, because everything is so inflamed, we really want to monitor her closely as thing as as the swelling goes away, mm -hmm. in case there is some like tear that they couldn't see on the X-rays, right? And that she's just on some medication and to keep her kind of chilled out for the next few it's days. Okay. It's okay. She's whining because she like is feeling the effects of the drugs. Yeah. And it's like freaking her out. Yeah. It's okay. Baby. Good girl. It's so crazy because I was explaining to everybody um, kind of what the prognosis and what happened and she's fine. Like obviously she's fine, but it was so hard for me to not get emotional because she's part of the family, you know, wow. and you're just like, you don't want anything to happen. Her little tongue is hanging out. She looks so dazed. Lika's inside, saddled, snuggled up on her little dog bed in the living room. Sydney is hanging out with her and making sure she stays nice and calm. But I think it's about to rain. What else is new? I know we've been trying to get some ice and water shield, which is like the, the plastic membrane that goes on the roof before you actually put metal roofing material up. We'll see how far they've gotten today. All right, this should be pretty quick and easy. Just gotta throw the ice and water shield up here on the roof roll it out, peel the paper off, stick it to the roof, and just start layering it back and forth. We've got a lot of work ahead of us right now, and hopefully we can get it done quickly. You hear that? That thunder? Yeah. Because it's Thursday. Yeah, of course. I forgot, it's golf league night. That's why it's raining. Exactly why it's raining. <laughs> Cool. 
the reason that there's so much rebar in here is because the ground we know gets pretty wet and so this is to reinforce the concrete slab and prevent it from settling which will be really nice especially if we're trying to park a car or a heavy machinery in here we know we want that uh, reinforced slab to stay level and not have any major dips or cracks or settling over time it's very intense it's way more rebar than we've ever had on any of our other slabs but it's going to make a big difference <laughs> wow <laughs> I think it probably goes without saying that today has just been one disaster after another. Today has just been one giant disaster uh, after you know what happened with Lika. These guys came to do the concrete. We had to remove a bunch of gravel because the gravel was too high. Then we start doing the blocking. We finally get the blocking finished and we go to ice and water shield the roof and it starts raining. Now the ice and water shield does not stick to the roof itself very well. It does a little bit, but not like as good as it sticks to one another. And the top edges are like all flailing up and not sticking to the roof. So all the water that's raining right now is running underneath the ice and water shield, effectively trapping it and ruining everything that we've done so far. And now it's really starting to come down. Sitting here uh, feeding Frank and Lika is just making me kind of take a step back and think about what happened today and just being extremely grateful for basically Lika being not super injured. Like she's, she's not a hundred percent. Like she has a little bit of pain, you know, they gave us some medication to give her to kind of help, you know, keep her down so that she doesn't do anything to aggravate it. But no like serious injury. And like what happened this morning really scared all of us into thinking that, you know, something very serious had happened or that, you know, the, the thought of like losing Lika because like she ran, you know, through our yard or something like that is horrific. I mean, at the end of the day, she was just a dog being a dog, like nothing out of the ordinary and things happen. And it's just a reminder that things can happen to all of us pet or human alike and uh, to never take any day for granted and to tell the people in your life that you love them because you just never know. You never know. You never know. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. We've uh, just been kind of mulling around the house, not doing much, ate some dinner. And uh, we're a little bit upset because I put up all that ice and water shield and I haven't really been able to go out and check if the rain has peeled any of it off or if water got behind it or if it caused any more damage. Hopefully that wasn't a mistake. I really thought that we would be able to get the ice and water shield up before it started raining. That's yeah, yeah. the only reason I, I went for it and uh, made a bad judgment call. So hopefully it's all right. We'll find out in a different episode, but uh, I guess this is where we're gonna call it for today. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you show us by giving us a big thumbs up on today's video. Consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. Thank you guys, we love you. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Adios. I've heard a story, I've heard it said. I've come to believe that love is a bet Sometimes you win it, sometimes you lose it Sometimes it calls you right